Tonight on Missing Persons Unit, remember Bill Roach, missing for 13 years. You knew Bill really well? Yeah, and that's why I followed him. Well, in Queensland, this man, Bly Grant, says his mate is alive and well. A six-foot male dressed in denim, that'll be our fella. In South Australia, a loving husband vanishes. He was my first and greatest. Leaving his family shattered. We just want to know that you're OK. Last week, police found 13-year-old Lisa Peters. Not in any trouble at all. But who'll look after her now? And we want to get you back in school, where there's people that don't pick on you. And a breakthrough for New South Wales detectives. We found numerous other human bones. The contents of these bags may finally bring closure to a grieving family. And to provide them with the answers that they need, uh, it's, it's a very special part of the job. At the New South Wales Missing Persons Unit... Good morning, everyone. It's another busy morning. A hectic week means many of the team are out on the road. We've got a few on today. Uh, Sergeant Samways is still up in Brisbane chasing down the Crime Stoppers report we have of Bill Roach. Um, we got that after the program went to air. Bill Roach was last seen in 1993 in Armidale. Police believed he was dead until DNA tests of bloodstains found at his farm proved negative. But after a reported sighting by a friend and multiple Crime Stopper reports that Bill was alive, Mark Samways is in Queensland to investigate. And there's a pretty good chance that this person may have been caught on CCTV, so fingers crossed. Some of us are on the road today. Lee is up in Lismore. They found Lisa and she's now going to live with a grandmother in Bathurst. Last week, 13-year-old Lisa Peters was found on the streets of Lismore where she'd been living without food or money for over a week. Worried about the young schoolgirl, police brokered a deal for her to live with her grandmother in Bathurst. Leah's escorting her to Sydney today and then it's off to Nan, so hopefully it'll work out for her. OK. I've got a new lead in one of my long-term missing persons cases from 2002 and it appears to be positive. Sergeant Vanessa Rolfe gets a break in her long-term case of a 30-year-old Victorian man reported missing five years ago. Police believe human remains found in a paddock in western New South Wales may be his. It's early days, but the detectives are hopeful it is their missing male. So, have a good day. Over in Adelaide, senior constable Kate Helbig from South Australian Missing Persons Hi, is investigating uh, the disappearance uh, of Robert uh, Nixon. Yes, we're just going through everything in the file at the moment just to see if there's uh, anything else there that we can have a look at. Robert was 53 when he vanished from a caravan park here on the outskirts of Adelaide in 1996. After a 10-year search, there's still no sign of him. The disappearance is still quite mysterious. And uh, in the weeks leading up to his disappearance, there was no signs of his intentions. Um, Kate, welcome. Robert was married to Lynn, and he has two children, Tricia and Van. <laughs> They're all desperate for any sort of information at all. Robert and his wife Lynn, seen here dancing at his son's wedding, retired to the Adelaide Caravan Park six months before he disappeared. His mood was normal and he seemed quite happy. The case may be a decade old, but it's still very much open. Kate hopes this new investigation will finally give the family some answers. Now, they need some closure on this and we need any information at all that can possibly help us out with uh, trying to find Mr Nixon. Meanwhile, in Brisbane, in the ongoing search for Bill Roach, case officers Greg Lamey and Mark Samways have arrived to meet with missing persons detective Jim Ryan. They're following up on the unconfirmed sightings of Bill. In our last program, we continued the search for Bill Roach, who was last seen in 1993. Police came to the conclusion that Bill had been murdered 
But before closing the case, the police launched one final search of his old farm. Investigators took samples of blood from Bill's farmhouse, but a forensic lab in Melbourne delivered a surprising result. Well, unfortunately, we were not able to get a result from any of the items. It kind of leaves us back to square one with the investigation, but it also leaves hope that Bill's still alive somewhere. Uh, Bill Rose that hope man. grew after an old That's university right. mate of Bill's yeah, says he actually up. saw him walking down a street in Brisbane. I suppose the most important thing for us is this, this guy I knew him intimately. Mm. And so it's not like someone out of the blue that's seen Bill's photo on TV. So this guy actually associated with him at the time he went missing. So for him to be adamant that it was okay. Bill, there's well, got to be some credence to it. You know, we'll be seeking to get a good shot of the person who he saw so we can sort of follow up from then. If it is Bill Roach, police think there's every chance he's been recorded by one of dozens of security cameras in the area. Probably the first um, possible evidence of life we've had for, what, 12, 13 years. Back in Adelaide, on the case of Robert Nixon, Kate's looking for fresh clues in the 10-year search. But to keep an open mind about what might have happened or what was in his mind at the time. Did he want to reinvent himself and start up a new life in another state? Robert was a hard-working farmer who was close to his family and popular with friends. But on the day he disappeared, he withdrew $250 from a bank account. Uh, there's been nothing further in the way of withdrawal since then. And he was carrying a black overnight bag and that was it. And it's left everything else behind. So we, we just don't know, it is a mystery. In Brisbane's Fortitude Valley, police are meeting the man who says he's seen Bill Roach. He's Bly Grant, Bill's old uni mate. Good to see you, Greg. Positive he saw Bill walking here only days ago, Bly called police immediately. And basically just retrace the steps from when you first saw the person. Yep. Bill. You knew Bill really well? Yeah, really well. We kicked around uni um, for five, six years I worked so in cafes, played pool against him, so drank with him. You'd recognise his gait, these mannerisms, absolutely. Absolutely. not just his facial features. No, and that's why I followed him. Not wanting to scare Bill off, he kept his distance. Yeah, just shopping bag, head down, looked like he was going home. Right. We'll just get you to retrace your steps, I suppose. Yeah. It's a strong lead. Police thought Bill had been murdered. But Bly swears he saw his mate alive. Go so anywhere closer than 10 metres away. In Brisbane's Fortitude Valley, the eyewitness in the Bill Roach case says he saw Bill right here just days ago. Um, might have been this centre section or the next one, but at one of the two he stopped and looked um, that way, down the hill basically. Camera, camera there. All right, that's good. All right, so he crossed here, didn't he? Yeah. Bly says he followed him for four blocks. And fortunately, the whole route is covered with surveillance cameras. That's at least three cameras we've got, hopefully got footage of. If Bill has been caught on camera, it'll confirm Bly's story that he's alive and possibly hiding out somewhere in Brisbane. Our witness is adamant that it was Bill Roach and we have to confirm that and see if it is Bill Roach and we won't stop until we do that. Right, we'll go to the city and have a look at the CCTV. Okay, let's go. All right, okay. Meanwhile, back in Adelaide, Kate is meeting with Robert Nixon's daughter. Hello, Trisha. Hi, Kate, how are you? Good, thanks. Nice to finally meet you after all this Trisha Thank was you. just 21 when her dad disappeared from a local camping ground. But there's never a day that I don't think about Dad, my memories, and I just wish that was here. he was here. An intensive search of the West Beach area by police foot patrols and the rescue... One Robert's disappearance was big news ten Nixon. years ago. But his family aren't giving up hope. 53-year-old Keith Nixon, better known as Robert, was last seen at around 12.35pm on Thursday, leaving this gate at the West Beach Caravan Park. He was my dad, and it's like anyone... They're there one day and you think they're going to be there forever. 
my brother and I um, growing up as children, we got, I mean, we were given everything. We had a fantastic childhood. By taking Tricia back through her memories of her dad, Kate hopes it might spark some clue to why he suddenly vanished. Dad was always a very quiet man. If he didn't want to speak to someone, he wouldn't speak to them. If he liked someone, he'd just keep talking. He was just that type of person. He would do anything for anyone. I saw him and Mum work so hard on the farm, and that's one thing I don't understand, that at his age, he was ready to settle down and enjoy his life. And he's not here. At Brisbane City Police Station, Mark and Greg are searching those surveillance cameras for the first sign of Bill Roach in 13 years. And this is it. 9.30? Yeah. That's 10.30. Yeah, because I saw him. I followed him after that. No. But their witness is having trouble working out exactly what time of the day he saw Bill. Well, I was there. Yeah. True, but at this stage, doesn't look good. They need to pinpoint the exact time, otherwise they'll have to view hundreds of hours of footage. Detective Sergeant Lamey had to ring his office back at Armadale and get his staff back there to look at the statement that the witness gave back there to, because the witness used, at the time of giving the statement, used his mobile phone to verify times, just to clarify a few things. Well, I suppose that's understandable. It's three weeks ago, so I can't expect him to remember exactly what happened. Now that they do have the time of the sighting, they begin to scan every frame. So it's 11 o'clock now. So he walks up, right? Yeah, walks. Oh, look at this. Then they spot the witness, Bly. It's Bly on his phone. Yeah. And that's Bly there, about to pass that sign. Yeah, OK. But the question is, is that Bill Roach walking in front of him? Well, it's got him. It's got the back of him. Um, in the distance, but it's not, not very clear, is it? It's no. definitely the guy that Bly was following. But... The camera angle is wrong, the image is blurred, and police are not sure. There must be, there must be other, other cameras up and down that strip. So now, if they can find the right camera, there's every chance they'll get a better shot of the man they think is Bill. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Adelaide, on the baffling case of missing dad Robert Nixon, from day one, I just went on a media campaign, and to this day, I haven't given up. Kate and Tricia scour through family photos and letters, hoping to trigger a new lead. And this is just my folder from day one. Because you sent... I sent over 300 letters. This is a list yeah. of all my letters that I've sent to every caravan park... In that, Australia? ..that Mum that and Dad... would have gone to. ..that Mum and Dad stayed at. So that was my first... Um, thing and I mean straight away I was writing letters to Women's Weekly, Women's Day, all country uh, newspapers, uh, the Herald Sun in Melbourne. Understandably, trying to find her dad has completely consumed Trisha's life. According to my next guests, the hardest part of dealing with the loss is not knowing whether their loved one is alive or dead. I've sent posters around to different caravan parks, over 300 posters. I've been on Australia's Most Wanted. Um, just everything I can do. <laughs> Lynn, what do you imagine has happened? Robert's just got up and gone on his own free will. I just don't know why. I just love to um, have, it, um, have an answer one day, but um, I just don't know why he's gone. It's been very, very hard for it, all the family. But not even the power of a television network could help this desperate family. I just want to know that he's OK. So if he wants to live his life by himself, you know, that's OK, as long as we know why, and that he's OK. It's just wondering every day, is he dead or is he alive? Kate decides to retrace his final steps during the days leading up to his disappearance. Good morning, Tricia. Hi, Lynn. I haven't met you before. It's Kate. Hello, Kate. Pleased Thanks to for meet coming you. here today. To Robert was last seen here at the West Beach Caravan Park on the morning he disappeared. I'd like it if you could just walk me through and talk me through what happened that day. The family holidayed here for over 20 years. After retirement, Robert and Lynn lived here until they fell in love with a house nearby. You've got to sign a contract and 
Actually, on the day that Robert went missing. That was the day the contract yes, was due to be signed? that's right, yes. On the day Robert and Lynn were due to sign the contract, Tricia came to do their family washing. And then I walked around because I needed some coins for the mm. washing machine. I went to the cupboard and then I went to this drawer um, to get some coins out because I knew Dad had kept like loose coins in there. And then I noticed that his wallet and watch was still in there. And did he normally keep his wallet and watch in that drawer? Yeah, that was just, yeah, he would yes. when they were in the caravan. And if he went out? He'd always take it with him. So you thought he must be around here somewhere? That's right. Just walking or...? I thought he might be in the park visiting someone. Yes. But they had no idea that Robert was already missing. Back in Brisbane's Fortitude Valley, Mark and Greg have stepped up their hunt for video evidence that may confirm Bill Roach is still alive. We now have a definitive time and a definitive date when that male person walked up that mall. So now we can approach, approach the owners of those establishments and say, do you have footage? They may now have a date, but the worry is there's a chance the pictures may already have been wiped. You've got a camera pointing out into the mall, yeah. play circuit TV. How long do you keep footage for? Oh, 28 days. We've got a long-term missing person. The guy's been missing for 13 years. Okay, we yeah. believe he walked up the mall. Any yeah. chance we could have a look? Yeah, I'll bring you. It may be high-tech evidence, but it's old-style policing. Hard slog, dingy corridors, and plenty of unanswered questions. Yeah. All right, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, that one. All right. Number yeah, 10. right. There's a camera on the roof of the hotel that points directly into the mall where we believe this person would have walked at, this, at the time that we looked at the council footage. 11 a.m. Exactly. So I'll probably try 10, 59. Depends how accurate your cameras. Should be dressed in denim and carrying a. They painstakingly scan every frame. Is that, the bottom? is that the bottom of the hill and this is the top of the hill? But the camera moves again before Bly, or the man he thinks is Bill Roach, come into view. Like, what, what time is it showing now? Yeah. It's such frustrating work, but with so many cameras, there has to be one that's looking in the right direction at 11 a.m. Back in Adelaide, groundsman Mark Davis shows Kate the last place he saw Robert Nixon. Because I knew he was a farmer. And uh, that's what we sort of had in common, that I was a groundsman and he was a farmer, and that's what we normally talked about. Staff at the caravan park where Mr Nixon and his wife Lynette have lived for the last six months while house hunting are shocked by his disappearance. He seemed in good spirits and uh, he, um, he just seemed very normal at the time. Ten years on, Mark is still the last person to have spoken to Robert before he vanished. And he seemed very normal to me. He didn't seem like agitated or anything. The only unusual thing I could see about him that he was actually wearing tracksuits where he normally wore shorts and he was carrying a black bag with him. A bag uh, similar to this could hold the key to Robert Nixon's mysterious disappearance. He was believed to be carrying it at the time and wearing pants of a similar colour to these and white sneakers. I walked in my caravan and I didn't think any more of it until I found out that he, was, he went missing. I, I just don't mm. understand how a man uh, of, of his nature would go missing. Meanwhile, back in Brisbane... Right, what about this one? That's a... After 10 That's hours on the trail, Mark and Greg are still searching Fortitude Valley's Brunswick Mall, looking for the right camera pointing the right way. Your TV there, does it shine very much out on the street or not? We just need to look. Doesn't shine much in the street, does it? No. no. All right, no worries, thank you. No, it gets down to here. No, yeah, it only sees the legs, there's no problem. Still no luck. Run out of options. Then, on the very last block, Greg spots yeah. one more camera. Does, does that capture you out onto the footpath? No. We're looking for someone who walked past here. Nothing okay, to do with what happened. A Without a clear image of Bly, or the man he thinks is Bill, they're back to square one. Well, if he's walked past there, it's going to pick him up, isn't it? Because that's like, just excellent vision. Let's see, yeah, see here also. And just a few frames later, Mark and Greg see the images they've been hoping for. 
Hey. There he is. Denim, denim jacket. The Sydney Morning Herald type bag, the recycling bag with stuff hanging out of it. That's definitely the bloke that Bly saw. Whether or not that's Bill, but he, a six foot male dressed in denim, that'll be our fella. And there's his mate Bly following close behind. Bly, that's our witness. So that's that guy in the denim's definitely the one he thinks was Bill. So he's still following him. So he's still convinced there. Yeah. And he's ringing someone to tell him that he, he spotted who he thinks is Bill Roach. Oh. That's excellent. Yeah, that's a good result. That is, that's good. At last. Yeah, it's taken lots of time. It's taken all day. It's but actually been good. 13 yeah. years. But if this is Bill Roach, it's all been worth it. Bill Roach may be alive. Perhaps Bill is walking around Brisbane somewhere. Back at Sydney's missing persons unit, they've begun working a new case to identify remains of a skeleton found on a New South Wales yeah, farm. Uh, g'day, sir. Graham Hook from the missing persons unit. Ringing about the unidentified um, skull that you found out there. Yeah. Graham's hoping Inspector Mick Willing in Dubbo can give him more information about this grim find. But yesterday morning around quarter to six, a farmer came across um, what appeared to be a human skull whilst he was mustering cattle. He contacted uh, rural crime investigators who went down with detectives and basically cordoned the scene off and SES gave us a hand doing a bob search of the entire area. Police believe the remains belonged to this man, Stuart, who was reported missing by his family in Victoria five years ago. I read in the orig original event that Stuart went missing from near the railway station at Stuart Town. Yeah. He disappeared on his way to Queensland after stopping in this small country town. He was seen wandering near the train tracks. And where the skull was found is probably around 500 metres from the railway line. And that's where police are concentrating their search for evidence. The remains will be taken to the Institute of Forensic Medicine at Glebe, where they'll be subjected to further examination and um, using DNA and dental records, hopefully identified. Back in Adelaide, on the case of missing farmer Robert Nixon, Kate has a few more questions for his wife. Hello. Hi, Lynn. How are you, Good, Kate? Good, thank you. I have to pick up Bonnie because okay. she'll jump all over you. She's a bit of a naughty little girl. Thank you. Yes, now. Robert met his sweetheart Lynn at a young farmer's dance in 1969. They were deeply in love and married soon after. Could you describe him as an in introvert? No, I wouldn't say an introvert, but he did like, as I said, keep to himself. Mm, yes, mm. yes. How many years were you married? Twi oh, over 25 years. Yes. yes. And you look back on those years as happy years? Yes, happy, very happy years. Mm. Yes, we reared two beautiful children, mm. Van and Tricia. It's a blur sometimes. I just, just can't realise that, you know, that, well, where is he? What, what, you know, what has happened? Yes, I do miss him a lot. He was my first and greatest. I've still got feelings for him now. And the heartache is the same for his distraught daughter, Tricia. I just wish he was here. I mean, with my unit, I've got my kitchen. I mean, since I've moved in, I've done a lot. I've put the floorboards, I've landscaped my backyard, I've done everything mm -hmm. I have. But my kitchen, I just look at it and I know if Dad was here, I'd have a new kitchen. I won't let anyone help me. I won't let tradesmen do anything in my unit. Because I think Dad'll do it. And why should I pay someone else? When he can do those things, that's the hardest thing. The investigation into the unidentified remains found in country New South Wales now ramps up. Yeah, Chris? Yes? Yeah, Graham Hook from the Missing Persons Unit. Sergeant Hook Good. is How contacting forensic uh, dentist Chris out. Griffiths, whose yeah. specialty is identifying uh, remains. It's um, a skull with the top jawbone intact. The lower jawbone isn't there, but the top jawbone does have some dental work done to it. Oh, that's great. Oh, that should, well, that at least puts it back into the 
we know it's a fairly modern skull and not a you know ancient Aboriginal or something. Dr. Like Griffiths that. will compare teeth from the skull with Stuart's dental records. At this stage, the the bones will come down. Um, they'll be held here pending the outcome of the dental examination. Uh, there'll be no need to actually examine those if we can get a fairly, well, a, a, a match through the dental work. But um, it'll only be if we're unable to get that match that we go back to the bones and have a look at the uh, DNA. And detectives from Dubbo have driven the five hours to Sydney. They carry with them the remains they think belong to their missing person so Dr Griffiths can examine them. Stuart was located walking down the railway tracks of Stuart Town, which uh, is mainly a freight line track, uh, naked, and the police at the time formed the opinion that he may be suffering from some sort of mental health issue. As a result, he was taken to hospital, where he was assessed by a doctor there, uh, and uh, subsequently released back into the police custody, allegedly not uh, suffering any mental issues, where he was returned to his vehicle and uh, released. He was not seen again since that time. Meanwhile, back in Adelaide... My name's Senior Constable Kate Helbig. I'm from the South Australia Police Missing Persons. Do you have a few minutes for me to Kate discuss... Kate launches a new media campaign in the hope it'll provide new information on missing dad, Robert Nixon. He's been missing for 10 years now, and he disappeared from the West Beach Caravan Park in South Australia in 1996. He was 53 years old then. And the circumstances of his disappearance are very Kate much knows he'd holidayed and talked about living in Queensland. We can include an age photograph that was put together recently by a facial identification expert here in... So she's decided to fax this aged photograph of Robert. It shows how he might look today. It's going to newspapers in towns along the North Queensland coast. We know that um, Keith and his wife travelled a lot in Queensland and he regularly expressed a desire to live there. And he's visited such places as Harvey Bay, Cairns, Townsville, Port Douglas, Maroochy Door. I think it's worthwhile now, after all this time, to just um, perhaps give a little bit more media exposure up, up in that direction. The photos are the latest step by police in their 10-year search for Robert Nixon. To say, Dad, our lives hasn't been the same since you left us. And we just want to know that you're OK. And if you are, can you just let us know? Because we miss you so much. In Queensland, it's day two in the search for Bill Roach. Detective Jim Ryan has taken Mark and Greg to a pub in Wynnum where Crime Stoppers reports have also placed Bill. One of the premises he's supposed to hang is here on Friday okay. nights. Rod's Friday. pushy. Yeah, yeah. He may have a beard now. Uh, the, his name, well, his name's Bill, Bill Roach or William Roach, but yep. he could be using any name now. But um, mate, by any chance, does that place look familiar at all? Friday nights plays the pokies, supposedly. And mind you, that photo's 13 years old. To confirm the reports, Mark and Greg need someone to recognise Bill's photo. Does anyone like that look familiar? No. And after canvassing everyone in the bar... I think I have seen him in here. Whereabouts? In the public bar. They so finally get a positive ID. Yeah, but, you know, I was seeing just over there having a drink. It could just be the break they're looking for. And then a check of the bar's register shows there's actually two members on file called Roach. Uh, so your membership records only have addresses and names, no date of birth or...? No, we don't ask for date of birth. I, I know where that address is. It's not far from here. We can go and have a look at the address. After 13 years of searching, police finally have a lead and an address. One of last week's cases involved runaway 13-year-old schoolgirl Lisa Peters. Constable Leah Wilson from the New South Wales Missing Persons Unit is escorting Lisa to her grandmother's home in Bathurst. In our previous program, Leah flew to Lismore in country New South Wales to look for Lisa. I don't know where she's taking shelter, I don't know what she's eating, I don't know if she has any money. And I'm quite concerned about the people that she might be associating with. Lisa ran away from her uncle's home after just one day. 
Just stubborn. Yeah. Like all young people. Then, after a two-week search, local doing? police found her in Lismore. Hello, Lisa. How are you going? Don't be scared, sweetheart. You're not in any trouble, OK? You're not in any trouble at all. Do you want to tell me what's been going on? No? After right, hours of counselling, authorities decided that Lisa should leave Lismore and live with her grandmother in Bathurst. I don't want to leave yet. Lisa, unfortunately, you can't keep running away and we're really worried about you and we want to get you back in school where there's people that don't pick on you. So today, at Sydney Airport, Lisa is finally a little happier. Most of the time I've been looking for my boyfriend because he went missing as well. He ran away from his mum. The last one was the first trip, so... My nan said that he's allowed to move in with us. But I can't find him, so... OK, it's gate 47. I think it's a great result, actually, and the best part of it is Lisa's actually now talking to me and smiling, and so it's been a good day. <laughs> So Leah grabs the chance to give Lisa some good old-fashioned advice. I told you you shouldn't fight over boys. Should you? You shouldn't fight over boys. Flight 526 departs. See you, Lisa. I'll give you a call on Friday, OK? See you, sweetheart. As Lisa boards the flight, Leah can only hope that her grandmother will turn her young life around. Obviously, there's a lot of children in the same position as Lisa, um, but it does make me feel really happy and it makes us all feel good when we can reunite them with family and that they do show some kind of in, um, indication and there's an undertaking that they want to make things different. And when we give them that slight opportunity, it's all up to Lisa now. It's case closed for now, but just how long will Lisa stay in Bathurst? Back in Wynnum, a hopeful lead has turned to more bad news as a phone Just call a phone stops call police dead in their tracks. And the person Roach who lives at that address is a gentleman 80 years of age. He lives there with his wife. So um, obviously it's a different person to our missing person. That's good. What saves us a trip, but at least it answers that. Yeah. It's another dead end. But multiple callers who saw the program on television are sure they've seen Bill in the area. So police keep looking. We're now in Bathurst, in country New South Wales. Teenage runaway Lisa Peters is finally home, settling in with sister Jackie and her grandmother, Mari. Jackie is so relieved to see her sister she even bought her a kitten. Nanny cried for a while and I was worried about you being hurt and all, you know. You, you don't know how much upset you, Nan, because I love you so much, you know that. Silly girl. <laughs> when Nan cried, it would make me cry. <laughs> and I'd sleep with Nan every night because she'd cry herself to sleep because she missed her that much. At least until her mum in Darwin finds a home, Lisa will stay here with her gran and her new pet and older sister. <laughs> well, um, I'm trying to convince her to go back to school. She's going to have to do year seven again because she only went for a few weeks. I'm going to get a job on the weekends and I'm going to see if she wants to get a job with me on the weekends. So I'm gonna see what she wants to do. Whenever anyone mentioned your name, I'd start crying because I missed you. I missed you too. And I won't run away again. Yeah, I'm starting to cry now. <laughs> Sydney's police headquarters, in the case of the skeleton remains, Dubbo detectives are carrying the evidence they hope will solve their missing persons case. Nick Kesseris and Luke Scott will take the remains to Glebe Morgue, where up to 20 skeletons are identified by their teeth every year. I'm 
on Thursday we obviously located the, uh, the skull yep. after the farmer located it in the paddock. Yep. Uh, as a result of that, we organised the SES and there was a line search was done. As a result, we found numerous other human bones. Some of them, we believe, may be animal. Uh, we just need to get uh, that clarified, obviously, when we get to Glebe. Um, other than that, um, we've just seized them and brought them down for today. Uh, we've got seen the coroner. She's been notified at Wellington. Uh, and she's obviously issued an order for a post-mortem. But it'll be another 24 hours before Stuart's dental records arrive. If we can identify him on dental, it'll be done straight away as soon as the records are here. Yep. The only problem is with that, it's going to be, he's only got one filling. Back in Queensland, in the search for Bill Roach, calls to Crime Stoppers have also placed him here at the Wynnum RSL. Um. Uh, you can talk to some other staff if you like. Mark hopes if Bill drinks here, he'll also be on the members' register. We've got three roaches, they're all females. That's bad news for us, but it makes no. it easier. Yeah. So then, the club manager recalls a regular patron who fits Bill's description. This man's not deputy. Because there well. is a person who, if he does, who could look a little bit like that, he rides around on a motorcycle, on a motorised bike. I've seen him in Wynnum, because I live in Wynnum myself. It's the second mention of the man on the bike who looks like Bill Roach, except that this man wears a hearing aid. Well, who knows what's happened in that 13 years? He could have had an accident, something could have happened to him. Um, yeah, I wouldn't discount it because of that, especially seeing the age seems to fit. They said in mid-30s. So their canvas is working, but is the man on the push bike Bill Roach? Back in Melbourne, the case of missing mum Veronica Green is still very active. Who could forget both her daughters' heartbreaking 30-year search? But now, there's been yet another development in the case. Previously on the series, we met Veronica's daughters, Jackie and Penny. There he is. While looking for their mum, they found a brother they'd never seen. Stephen was adopted out at birth and never knew his biological family. <laughs> All right, go on. At a family reunion, he also met his dad for the first time. He just stared at me for a long time. I asked him about our mother. He told me she was beautiful. He told me he's really um, passionate and sorry that she's not around. I haven't really got to what went on about me, if that makes any sense with him, you know. I told him there was plenty of time for that. But unfortunately, time ran out for his father and Stephen. A month later, Dad passed away, so it was fantastic that he was able to meet his son. He said, oh, I'm really, pr really proud of him, my son. How's, you know, my son? So, you know, and I think, I think that's the thing is, it was the connection to, to Mum, just like us. Yeah, that was the only thing that was not complete for Dad, was uh, him having not ever seen Mum again. And uh, I think he probably had a lot to say to her, you know. Mm. I really think that he was so regretful of the whole situation. and He never got over her. Mm. Nothing to fear now, Mum. Not that there was. Probably the only thing he would have said to you was sorry. With Dad dying, this closure, you know, but with Mum, there's just no closure. You never get over that. You never stop looking and you never stop waiting and you never stop wondering if you're ever going to see her again. I can't express uh, how, how complete you would make things for me and, and Penny, and we just really would love to spend Christmas 2007 with you. Please come home. Back in Queensland, after a long day searching for Bill last, Roach, our last real chance. Police have reached the end of the trail in Winnipeg. Any chance you could just run this guy's name through your records, please? What was it? Roach. R O A C H. R O A C H. There's no member called Roach. But staff here also remember the man who looks like Bill and who rides a bike. This is the third licensed premises and 
one we were at before we came here, they, they described that fella that you were talking about with the hearing aids. And a search of the club's me. register gives them a name and another address. Well, we'll go over the address. Have a talk to him. All right. Good. Just as they're about to leave, there's a sudden development. The man on the bike shows up. 13 years of searching comes down to this next moment. Every year, over 30,000 people go missing. Have you seen 52-year-old Margaret Burney, last seen in Mount Gambia, South Australia, in 1988? Or 36-year-old Norman Lawson, missing from Kakadu National Park in 1986? And 46-year-old Andrea Wharton, who disappeared from the Gold Coast in 1984. If you have any information, please call 1-800-333-000.